In this video, I want to explain how elevator recall works. Um, so first, just kind of high level at the uh, conceptual level here. Um, imagine you've got this four-story building plus a basement and this block of rooms on the left here is the elevator shaft. So I know it's a little bit deceiving because it looks like you're outside and then this looks like it opens outside, but imagine I just kind of slice the building there so that this is the interior door at each level, right? And the smoke detector is just right outside of it. Um, so the concept is if there's a fire on a floor, you don't want somebody to walk into the building, into the elevator and take the elevator up to the floor of the fire, right? You don't, you know, you don't want anyone to use the elevators in a fire in general, but particularly um, you don't want them to go up to the floor of the fire. So the way it works is initially you'll group the detectors into two groups first group will be all of the smoke detectors outside of the elevator that will send the car to the first floor and we refer to that as primary recall um, quick little tangent when you start programming these things and work with elevator companies in my experience they will often use the opposite term because in a second here when I explain alternate they will call that primary because it's a smoke detector for the primary floor so when we get into the relays I'm going to explain how I kind of mitigate that but so we're going to group every detector that's going to send the car to the primary floor which based on these lovely bushes we could tell that that's the main floor where the where the exit of the building is right so four three two and basement are all going to be in the same group that sends the car to the first floor and then the first floor is going to be in the second group that will send the car to the alternate floor. Um, which floor is the alternate floor is not going to be for you to decide. It's most likely either going to be the second floor or the basement that's going to be building dependent. So if the basement had, let's say it was actually ground level on the back side of the building or something and it had a, you know, an exit, then that would be the better choice. Otherwise, it's typically the second floor. But you won't make that call. The elevator people will. You'll just need to have you know one relay representing the first group and another relay representing the, first, the the other group. So I threw in some addresses here and they seem a little bit random um, and they are. What I ended up doing, the reason I wanted to make them random is to stress that the device address doesn't matter. Um, it's how you zone it or group it that matters. Um, I made a quick spreadsheet that would replicate um, like some programming software for the building. So imagine that our building is, you know, it's a, it's a four-story building with a basement and you see one small little sliver of it. There's a bunch of other devices, right? So there's a bunch of stuff in the basement, a bunch of stuff in the first floor. And so what I did was went and looked at what I made each elevator lobby. So D4 is basement elevator lobby, first floor elevator lobby is D10, etc. And you can see there's already some zoning in here. So here's the address scheme all the way on the left. And then there's some zoning. So it looks like all of the basement is zone 10, except for the valve tamper. All the first floor is zone 1. All the second floor is zone 2. Third is zone 3. Fourth is zone 4. When we go to do elevator programming, now we only want the smoke detector that's located by the elevator to trigger elevator recall. Now you may find some situations where the recall is actually being done off of a water flow or they want all the detectors in that corridor or something to trigger them. You know, if an inspector tells you something like that, then so be it. But in our example, we're just using the elevator lobby. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and group all of the detectors that I want to bring the, the car down to the first floor into their own unique group. And on the type of panel, let's say this is a firelight, we're just going to add another zone to it. So the elevator lobby, we can still have it trigger zone 10, whatever zone 10 is doing. Maybe that's for strobes or something. But then let's also make it do, let's use zone 11 for primary. And so we're going to skip the first floor for right now because we don't want the first floor smoke to send it to the first floor, right? So then the second floor elevator lobby is right here. We'll make this zone 11. Go to the third floor elevator lobby. That's zone 11 fourth floor elevator lobby zone 11 okay so those are all done now for our first floor let's make that zone 12 
So first floor elevator lobby here is going to be zone 12. So what we're going to end up doing is mapping that to a relay. So zone 11 is what's going to turn on the primary relay. Zone 12 is what's going to turn on the alternate relay. Um, but there's a little bit more to elevator recall. So occasionally you'll have devices in the elevator shaft or um, in the elevator pit. Um, we're going to ignore heat detectors for right now, but I will get into that in another video shortly. Um, and then you'll always have one in the elevator machine room. And what they want to have happen is if there's a fire somewhere in a location that would affect the elevator, like the machine room, pit, or shaft, they want um, the elevator, the fireman's hat, which is a little light located inside the elevator car, to start flashing. So typically, when one, when your elevator recalls on, say, either primary or alternate recall, that fireman's hat will come on solid. They want it to flash when there's something wrong with the machine room, because with the way that the elevator code is, the car will drop down to one in most cases, right? If it's if it if it's on if the fire's on any floor other than the ground floor, and then the fireman will have the ability to put their key into the door and manually ride it to um, they need one key in the door and another key in the car itself, and then manually take it to whatever floor they want. So that has nothing to do with us. That's all just done on the elevator side. But when something happened in either the machine room, the pit, or the shaft, they want that hat to flash to indicate to the fireman that it's not safe to use the elevator. So what that means for us is that we need at least a third relay um, and a third grouping. Now it gets a little bit complicated here because there are a couple things that come into play. Um, number one is where is the machine room located? depending on the type of elevator, it's either going to be at the top, you know, above the highest floor, so it'll be like a, its own penthouse, like this, or in most cases in a building this size, it would be a hydraulic elevator, and it would be adjacent to the pit, somewhere like right here, right? So, let's assume for now it's like this and it's located in the basement. Well, okay, so if it's in the basement, and there is a basement and your primary floor is the first floor then this is kinda easy because we're just gonna send the car to one even if the machine room detector goes off right you can flash the hat send the car to one um, to explain what I want to explain next I'm gonna have to get into the actual relays so we'll be jumping around a little bit here back and forth but I think you know you guys will get the, the big picture idea easily enough um, and so in the next video, I'll probably, I'm going to look at the relays.